<laughs> hey, can you toss me that can of WD-40? Oh, you hear that? Hear that little squeaking? Intuitively, when our joints are stiff, when they like feel creaky, we just think biomechanics, right? We think, I need to stretch, or I need to get some rehabilitation done, or I need to do some kind of shift with my, my movement patterns, work on my mobility. And that's all fine and dandy, it absolutely applies, but our nutrition can definitely be playing a role in how our joints feel. And I think that's where a lot of the scrutiny within a lot of the different health communities come from. Like, it's easy to compartmentalize, look at specific things and say, well, this is the problem, let's identify it there. But if we look at the whole body and we look at like inflammatory markers in the body, we see, oh, well, if inflammation is potentially high in the body, then there's a chance it's gonna be high in the joint too, and that might be your more isolated area of stiffness, possibly even pain. Okay, when you look at the population, there is a public health report that indicated that like 20% of the population is dealing with arthritis. Okay, that's a good chunk of people, and not all of them are necessarily having a, like a clinical diagnosis of it. So like that joint stiffness and everything like that, it probably warrants making some choices with your diet to, I don't know, feel a little bit better as far as your inflammatory signals go. So interestingly enough, there was a study that was published in the journal Pain Medicine, took a look at 65 to 75 year olds, and for 12 weeks had them go on either a low carb protocol or a low fat protocol. Okay, and the low carb protocol ended up having lower levels of reactive oxygen species that resulted in well, lower levels of like joint stiffness and potentially even pain. Now that's not saying that a low carb diet is the way to go. That's not what I'm necessarily suggesting. My point in mentioning this study is that a massive dietary intervention resulted in a change for people in one way or the other. In this case, maybe they lost more weight and it just relieved their joints, I don't know. But let's talk about some specific foods that have some very specific effects when it comes down to how our joints feel. Hey, after this video, go ahead and check out Thrive Market. I put a link for them down below. They are an online membership-based grocery store. So if you wanna get any kind of like food that you would normally would have to go to Whole Foods to get, or maybe a specialty grocery store in the better for you category, you gotta check them out. So if you're doing keto, paleo, fasting, vegan, whatever, they have something for you. They have so many items to choose from. They have their own brand items and they also carry some of the larger name brands. It is super awesome, but I think the best part is how convenient it is. Everything gets delivered right to your doorstep, so you get it within a couple of days. You don't have to spend money going to the grocery store. You don't have to get in the car and deal with people, all that. It's super easy. And also, they are an amazing supporter and sponsor of this channel, which makes them super cool. And because of that, put a 25% off discount link for a membership down below, as well as a free gift when you sign up with Thrive Market. So you check out that link down below. Okay, first food, cruciferous vegetables. And it's not because they're just good for you. It's because they contain something called sulforaphane, which is relatively, well, now heavily researched. So it's kind of interesting. There was a study that was published in the journal PLOS1 that took a look at sulforaphane specifically. They found that sulforaphane activated NRF2, which can help alleviate an inflammatory response associated directly with the joints. So when you activate NRF2, it can modulate some of that, thereby reducing some of the stiffness that you might have in a joint to begin with. But what I found was even more interesting is they found that there was a reduction in the antibodies that would normally trigger the breakdown of collagen. Collagen makes up cartilage and supports our joints and everything like that. So if we have antibodies that are breaking down or triggering the breakdown of collagen, that's not a very good thing. So if we can reduce those antibodies, utilizing sulforaphane that's in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, like cauliflower, like kale, things like that, that's a pretty cool like low-hanging fruit or low-hanging broccoli to go after. Then the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics published a study that demonstrated that higher intake of cruciferous vegetables led to less pro-inflammatory markers that had to do, again, well, whole body inflammation in this case. But then when you look at other studies, you see that whole body inflammation can absolutely elevate how our joints are affected. So it's not like you just have isolated inflammation in a joint. Whole body inflammation, which can potentially be modulated by cruciferous vegetables, well, that plays a role in how our joints feel. So again, we have to look at this holistic big picture. Anyhow, moving on to the next one, olive oil. I love that olive oil is being super researched right now because I think it has a lot of amazing properties. So this study was published in the journal Nutrition Research. It took a look at 30 participants and it gave them 400 milligrams of olive oil extract for eight weeks. Okay, and they found that when they did have the olive oil extract, they gave them a health assessment questionnaire and they found that their disability index improved. Basically, they were less disabled, if you want to call it that. They were more mobile, they were less sedentary, they were able to move around. Now, the researchers suggested that the potent antioxidants and the anti-inflammatory effects of olive oil, which I know are powerful, 
But I don't know, I still kind of disagree on that. I kind of feel like if someone is adding olive oil into their diet, there's a higher likelihood that they're pulling something else out. And I am much more a fan of pulling something that's causing a problem out than just adding something in and saying it's got a magical healing benefit. So I kind of tend to think that because they added olive oil in, maybe they were replacing something else. Because this study also took a look at saturated fat intake and found when they looked at 2,092 participants, saturated fat was kind of inversely correlated. So the higher the saturated fat content, then there was more joint issues. So we have to kind of look at that equation too. But then there was a study that was published in Arthritis Care and Research, and this one found that more monounsaturated fat intake was associated with less of a decline in joint space width. So if our joints are shrinking and that space width is shrinking, then obviously we're going to have like restricted movement. So somehow monounsaturated fats are reducing the kind of shrinkage of that, which is kind of interesting. Now then you have to ask yourself the question though, if monounsaturated fats are coming in, what is getting replaced? Okay, so it doesn't necessarily mean that it's magical, but I do think that adding monounsaturated fats in probably have some component, even if it is simply that it allows you to, you know, eat that instead of something else. Then we have one that's a little bit more obvious. That's going to be omega-3 consumption. High amounts of fatty, oily fish plays a pretty powerful role. We know that omega-3s have a powerful anti-inflammatory effect. That's probably what they are most noted for. But a study that was published in Rheumatology Advances took a look at 152 participants, a pretty good sized study, and they gave them 2 grams, 2,000 milligrams of docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, and 400 milligrams of EPA. And they did this for 16 weeks. And after 16 weeks, they found that they had improvements in joint pain, and of course, they had the modulation of inflammation, because again, omega-3s affect that pathway. So pretty interesting stuff there. But now, what do we want to look at avoiding? Because this is a pretty important piece, right? Well, sugar is going to make the top of this list, and sugar is isolated from other carbohydrates. I don't care what people will say about grouping macronutrients together. This study illuminates that pretty clear. So this study was published in Disease Models and Mechanisms, and it looked at sugar versus cornstarch. Okay? And what they found is that when subjects consumed sugar, they had worsened joint pain, they had increases in inflammation, they had decreases in uh, antioxidant activity, and the group that had the cornstarch did not. That's kind of interesting because when you're adding sugar in and cornstarch in equal amounts, same amount of calories, the sugar group had more joint issues. So it's not a carbohydrate thing. It's not a gram for gram carbohydrate thing per se. It's more so about what kind of carbohydrates you're consuming. And that can definitely play a role. So when you see that, that kind of scares me a little bit with sugar. They also found with this study that it lowered the quality of the protein network, which is going to be a support system for collagen and everything like that. So sugar is single-handedly going in and actually diminishing the potential like, effects, right? It's diminishing your body's, dare I say, rehab ability. Then we have saturated fats. I'm not saying avoid saturated fats, but if possible, try to replace them with monounsaturated fats per that study I mentioned earlier. Here's the deal with saturated fats. They're not necessarily bad for you, but they don't have a lot of nutritional value. Okay, I would not recommend having more than like 10 to 20% of your total fat calories coming from saturated fat. Not because they're bad for you, but because they don't have nutritional value. Whereas you could replace them with things like olive oil or avocado oil that actually have polyphenols and things that are going to assist you and have some benefit too, not to mention be good on like all kinds of kind of lipid scales and everything. Then omega-6s, so heavy amounts of seed oils, like sunflower seed oil, soy oil, uh, canola oil, all those things. Those omega-6s that are in those fats are going to trigger prostaglandins that activate COX1 and COX2, cyclooxygenase enzymes. Now, COX1 and COX2, when you take ibuprofen, those are COX inhibitors because you are trying to modulate inflammation via ibuprofen. So if you have a prostaglandin that is elevating COX-1 and COX-2, do the math. Okay, there is a systemic response there that we have to be paying attention to. So at the end of the day, add those cruciferous vegetables in whenever you possibly can. Use olive oil. Use that extra virgin, high-quality olive oil. Add in the fish oil whenever you can. Limit the sugar intake. Focus on whole body inflammation rather than just isolating a specific joint. And couple that along with your rehab to try to actually get that mobility back. It's something that I have to practice too, and it's reality. So as always, keep it locked here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.